okay, so you've written the perfect blog, you've researched it, written it, edited it, optimize it for SEO based on the right H1s, H2s, the rest, you name it, it's perfect. You publish and now you what? You got about six to nine months to wait before Google figures it out, picks it up and starts to give you traffic. Not a great plan, is it? <laughs> Especially the amount of hours that go into it. So if you've got that powerful blog post or video, and you know this is the thing that's gonna get your audience speaking about the right topics, and this is your top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, whatever it is, you have to get it to them quickly because the more time you waste, by the time it's supposed to rank, you're busy with something else. You've totally forgotten about it. So it's time to get targeted traffic as quickly as possible to that blog post. Okay, how are you gonna do it? Well, you have to have a solid content promotion strategy. This is crucial. So, because you're gonna get, in all likelihood, way more traffic from social media marketing, at least in the first six to nine months, as you're gonna get from SEO. So why not get it out there? Speak to your audience, get those conversations started. So in this video, I'm gonna cover content promotion strategy using social media. Let's get going. Hi, I'm Daryl Mordecai from Rank Ranger. Rank Ranger is an all-in-one SEO and digital marketing platform that will help you scale your business through data and analytics. Okay, so here we are. So now, what is your first step? So if you have, if you've been blogging for a while or you've created videos for a while, start to find out which ones are your highest performers. Now, again, if you're new at this, you're not gonna know that. So you're gonna have to use a little bit of competitor research. But if you've already created uh, a nice amount of blog posts, let's say, let's start to look at two places. First up, I love to look at Google Analytics. Google Analytics gives you fantastic data and it should be always set up. That's one of your, your go-to places. Start to look which posts are getting the most time on, on page, right? Because if people are spending time, they're reading your articles, those are the ones you want to focus on, right? The ones that are getting the most views. And I mean from all channels. Let's say they, they're coming in from social media. Now, so you should be able to see that very quickly in, in Google Analytics. Okay, here we go. So here we are in Google Analytics. This is just going to be very brief. So um, if you want to look at your, your performance metrics and you want to know which pages are doing the best, so here's a great place to start. Um, this is not going to be in-depth. I've got a much more in-depth video about Google Analytics. I will link to that in the description. Okay, how do you find your, your performance metrics? So simply, you go to Behavior, click on Site Content, and All Pages, okay? And here you'll see a whole bunch of your pages. You can filter them if you need to. And then you can look simply at your page views, you know, which ones are just simply getting more views. Um, you can look at, I would look at average time on page, you know, what uh, are people spending time on the page. Bounce rate also could show you perhaps, um, again, these are not, these are limited metrics, but you can still see something from here. You could see that if people are on your page for three and a half seconds, they don't like it. So, you know, um, if people are bouncing, that's not so great. Or if they, the, the bounce rate is low, maybe then they are staying. Another place to look for high performers, because we're looking for your, the cream of the crop here. We're looking for your best articles. So again, look in social media. Which articles created conversations? Which articles were shared? Okay, look for those ones because those are the ones that you're gonna work on. Now again, if you don't have a decent amount of work out there, you don't, you've had no shares, no traffic, so then you have to switch to competitor research. So you can start to look at your competitors and see which are their best performers. It's very easy to do, you know, just set up your site, Explorer, I'll show you how to do that in a, in a minute, and start to take a look. What are their top articles? Which ones are getting traffic? And what you can then start to do 
is create perhaps similar content that hopefully you can siphon off some of that traffic. Okay, you want to get a sort of a sense, like as I mentioned, you don't have too much uh, traffic or anything on your, on your blog or any of your content, and you want to see what your competitors are doing. So you pop on over to the Site Explorer, look up specifically organic pages, okay? Type your competitor's uh, domain into the search bar, hit search, and then you'll see straight away a list of their top ranking pages. You'll get how much traffic they're getting, what keywords. This is really great information to give you a certain sense for what kind of content is ranking uh, organically specifically. And we can see, you know, based on search uh, traffic, you can kind of get a sense for what the search intent for these, uh, these posts are. And you can dig through keywords to see what kind of topics people are interested in and maybe uh, create content around there. Okay, there's a lot more to this. This is just a super quick look. We can also look at organic competitors and look at as many as possible and get more detail. But just simply speaking, this is one way to get your competitors' top ranking content and to see what their audiences are interested in. Okay, so here's step two. Now, for step two, this might require a little bit of a paradigm shift, okay? When this is the paradigm that I used to have, is I'd go onto social media and write these tiny little posts saying, check out my blog post about this. Oh, I, wrote a, I created a video about that. Check it out with a link. Okay, those posts suck. <laughs> okay, don't make sucky posts like that. Instead, think about this. There's a copywriting book uh, called the Robert Collier Letter Book. This old, old copywriting book. There's a fantastic nugget in there. One little idea that you can, you can use in all your marketing. He says like this. Imagine two people are having a conversation, right? They're discussing politics or whatever they're discussing, right? And you have something to sell. So you show up and you say, hey guys, do you want to buy this coat? Okay, so how, how successful do you think you're going to be? I don't think you're going to be very successful because they're in the middle of a conversation and you're coming and butting in <laughs> with your stupid coat, right? So the right way to do this is try to find your way into their conversation. Okay. Discuss with them. Whatever they're discussing, work with them. They're in the middle of something. They're probably enjoying the conversation. So maybe there's room for you as well. You can also join in. And then you can try and steer it to your coat. And if it's appropriate, by all means mention it. If it's not appropriate, don't say a thing. Okay. In other words, we need to bait people with things that they're already interested in. Yeah. In other words, People have conversations that are cons constantly going on in their minds. I do all the time. I talk to myself in my head all the time. Right? So what do we talk to ourselves about? The things we want to achieve, ideas we want to, you know, things, are, things we want are going on in our heads all the time. So when you try to present something to someone, you have to go into that conversation that's already going on in their minds. Okay? So... What are people, what conversations are people having in social media? Well, you have to look at each, each platform. So people probably want to be entertained a little bit when they go to Facebook, um, where people go off to uh, LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, you know, people are sharing like long form uh, business ideas there. So, you know, if you have some nice business ideas, so you want to come in with a, like a nice long form business idea that someone would be interested on that platform to read. Quora, people are asking questions, so come with answers. Okay, now that's the general approach I would think to to social media is to try and figure out what people actually want to see. Next thing, you want to take your content asset that you created, let's say a blog post or a video or something that you want to promote. Don't just say, check out my thing. No, take your blog post and look at it. Let's say it's a five step process on how to groom your dog or whatever, you know. Um, so maybe take out one point of there, one, one interesting point. So take point one out, okay, and make a little content asset. In other words, think of your social media as content assets. They're not links to your blog, no. They're little content, mini content assets. 
So take a piece of your blog and make it interesting for somebody on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Interesting. Keep it interesting, okay? And useful. So if you're sharing a useful tip, so somebody in that industry or who interest, is interested in your blog post would want to read that tip. That's the bait. So you're going to bait them with these content assets. And you should save all your assets because some of them are going to do great. Some of them are going to tank. But save them for later because you can share and share and share many times on different platforms. Yeah, whatever, whenever it's appropriate. So keep them. Keep each asset. But think of them as mini blog posts, mini videos. Take a video, and, and a 30-minute video, and break out a three-minute piece that's interesting and post that on social media. Okay? That's your bait. Once you've hooked them, now you can create a link to say, okay, you know, you want to see the rest of the post? I've got another five points. Click this link. Now the link is something interesting. You've already interested in them in your tip. Now take them to, to the blog post for a reason. You, you, you know, give them a reason to click. Okay, that's one option. Another option is to be humorous. So you can find sort of things that are funny in your industry. So for me, it's link spam. Link spam, link spam, link spam. Everybody's selling me high DA links, right? I can't stand it, but it's actually quite funny sometimes. But uh, so if I make a joke about link spam, anybody in my industry is going to see that and they're going to joke along with me. Now I've got their attention. If it's appropriate, you can now try and filter them off to, to, to some kind of content asset. So that's the general approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each blog post, each video, and make five or six different content assets. A content asset for Quora, a content asset for uh, LinkedIn, for, for Twitter, for Facebook. And I'm going to start to share those, okay? So the key here is to collect a numerous, numerous assets per, per asset. For a blog post, you want to have five or six different assets. For a video, the same idea, okay? Great. On to stage three. Okay, so here we're on step three. Now you've got those, your best content assets. You've broken it up into many assets. You've figured out the, the, the user intent or the, 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 the discussions that are going on in people's minds, and you've started to post, right? Fantastic. Now, don't forget to track your progress. This is super, super important. Trust me, you can't be a digital marketer without tracking your progress, okay? So, really there's two, two metrics you're going to be looking at. Um, the first thing is user metrics, okay? So, you post a post, it gets a load of likes, comments, shares, all that good stuff. Fantastic. So now, make a note. You know, this post did well. Try to figure out what's so great about that post because people are interacting with it, so it's clearly something that they're interested in. So fantastic, make more of those, right? As many as possible. However, there's another point to this, there's another aspect to this that you cannot neglect, is that I know from experience that many of my posts that get no likes, comments, and shares get a lot of clicks, okay? Now, the platforms are not gonna tell you which posts are getting clicks. They're not going to give you that. So you have to set that up yourself. And the way you do that is by setting up some tracking code in the actual URL itself. So let's say you have a URL to a blog post. You want to set up, which is usually got a question mark UTM, and you set that up and then you can put into your URL where the traffic came from. There's a lot of information you can add into the UTM, okay? Now, the way the simplest way to do this, or a simple way, is you can use a UTM builder. You don't have to know how to write up your, your, your URLs. And I'm going to link to the Rank Ranger UTM builder. It's a free tool. Um, go in there, put your URL in there, and it, it'll build it up for you. Okay? Cool. There's another way to do this, which I also found very useful. Um, and that is to create shortened links. Um, using Bitly. Now, Bitly is a, is a you know it's a link shortener, and I like to use Bitly be, uh, for especially for things like Twitter, where you have a you know maximum amount of characters, so you want to squeeze your URL down a little smaller so that you can get more characters in. So I use Bitly for that. Now, I don't just use it for that. You see, what's great about Bitly is it also gives you data. So if uh, one of your URLs 
got a million clicks, right, you'll see it shown in Bitly. This URL got a million clicks. So what you can do is you can create an, a different URL for each platform. You can create one for Twitter, one for Quora, whatever, and then you can see, ah, this one got a lot of clicks, this one got less clicks, and you can see which audiences are actually clicking through to your content. Okay, so there we have it, the three-step process. Here's a quick sum up. Step one is find your best performing content, right? Look in Google Analytics, look on social media, see what's liked and shared. The things that are going to create the most engagement and clicks on social media, that's where you're going. Okay, those are your content pieces that you want. Step two, break it up into small content assets, mini assets. And don't forget, we have to understand the conversations that are going on in people's heads and create assets that are going to make their way into those conversations. Okay, and then Post them, yeah, post them everywhere. Don't forget the assets themselves have to be appropriate for where you're posting, okay? But it's content assets and start posting them. But don't forget step three. Step three is to track everything you do. And, when, and then what you can do is once you're seeing posts that are doing well or posts that are getting more engagement, more clicks, hone in on those ones. Make more of those ones. And as you keep tweaking your social media game, it's just going to get better and better and better um, and you're going to be able to connect more and more to your audience. So it's always a bit of a trial and error here, you know, but that's why we're going to track everything, okay? I hope you got a lot out of this video um, and don't forget to like and subscribe and as always, I'll see you in the next one.